Madam President, I offer the following resolution. Resolve that we here convene a national convention for the purpose of nominating the alfalfa party's candidate for president of the United States. Resolved that the chair shall announce the esteemed Lamar Alexander, senior senator from the great state of Tennessee, a man who, in the middle of his career, spent six months living in, living in Australia and no one knew he was gone. <laughs> That's good. A man not afraid to speak his mind because he knows no one is listening. <laughs> a man who, if you Google the word bland, <laughs> Google prompts you with did you mean Lamar Alexander? <laughs> a man so lacking in charisma <laughs> that when the two of us are together, people listening cannot drive or operate heavy machinery. <laughs> Given those qualifications, it is resolved that Lamar Alexander be the alfalfa party's unanimous choice for President of the United States. <laughs> be it further resolved that the question shall be voted upon without motion, debate, or other dilatory proceeding. The decision of the chair shall be final on this question and all others, and not subject to meddlesome appeal, point of order, or other mischief. Madam President, I move the adoption of the resolution, and I second the motion. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm so honored uh, by this nomination that I want you to be the very first to hear the perfect alfalfa campaign slogan. No, we can't. This is our annual convention where we get together to nominate a candidate, decide what action to take, and do nothing, which is the best thing to do after 2010. <laughs> Midterm disaster for Dems named Obama. Sarah is leading the Grizzlies called Mama. Triangulation is back in the news. The White House is following Bill Clinton's views. <laughs> Nancy is out and is no longer speaker. Everyone's mad at the web wiki leaker. Deficit soaring and it's out of sight. What the hell I will announce here tonight. W's new book has become a bestseller. He's still unemployed, but he's still a nice feller. <laughs> it's been good news for Alfalfa this year. Who even knows if Barack was born here? When the polls dip, when there's gridlock, let's not blame BP. We have a real choice. It's time for Lamar, so thank you for picking me. Thank you. Well, 2010, <clears throat> there's more. 2010 was a pretty bad year for the president. He's got to be yearning for the good old days. Back in 2009, <laughs> It was a very good year. It was a very good year before health care and partisan fights. Now he has sleepless nights. He's clearly lost his way. The guy's hair's turning gray. Look, I know I know I can beat President Obama. We're complete 
opposites. I've even hired people outside of Chicago. <laughs> and I don't mean Ron. To, to be able to defeat, to be able, to be able to defeat me, the president may have to take drastic steps. He may actually have to replace Joe Biden on the ticket. And when he does replace him, and Joe asks him why, here is what the president can tell Vice President Biden. You talk too much, you worry me to death. You talk too much, you even worry my pet. You just talk, 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 talk too much. You talk about people that you don't know. You talk about people wherever you go. You just talk, talk, talk. <laughs> talk too much. You just talk, 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 talk too much. Now, now, of course, of course, this raises a question. If he dumps Joe Biden, who will Barack Obama nominate or pick? Hillary? She's dreaming she's the new VP. She'd then be one step from the throne. With her numbers so high, she'd kiss state goodbye. She can't leave well enough alone. Am I worried about winning? No, not at all. Just look at some of the candidates that I might be running against. There's Sarah Palin. Sarah and Johnny in 08. Sparks flew the moment they met. She swore she'd play second fiddle. Her background he wishes he'd vet. She was his girl, but she done him wrong. Now, Sarah, <laughs> Sarah, Sarah is very attractive, but she's not, she's not the prettiest candidate out there. There's Mitt Romney. <laughs> Six foot two, blood is blue, says five things on each issue. Does anybody know where Mitt stands? Then there's a man many think is the favorite, Mike Huckabee. Call him evangelical. Call him unelectable. Like me, he lost New Hampshire, too. But what about one of the bright new faces in the na national spotlight? He could run. Oh, well, it's crying time again for Mr. Speaker. Could it be, <laughs> could it be that camel light smoke in his eyes? Who knows if he just heard some sad, sad story, or if he's reacting to some spray tan dye. <laughs> Now, now, enough, enough, enough about my opponents. This is my time. This is our time. This time, the voters have seen the light. Wandered so aimless, just couldn't win. Went to the Senate, stuck there again. Alfalfa came to save my career. On my way, White House next year. 
White House next year, White House next year, leaving the Senate, do not fear. Alfalfa came to save his career, he's on his way, White House next year. Stuck in the center, I wandered alone. Treaties like start, I claim for my own. When I filibuster, the crowd will all cheer. On my way, White House next year. White House next year, White House next year. Leaving the Senate, do not fear. Alfalfa came to save his career. He's on. I was a fool to run twice before Nobody cared, my speeches did bore Alfalfa came to save my career On my way, White House next year White House next year, White House next year Leaving the Senate, do not fear Alfalfa came to save his career He's on Let's hear it for the fabulous Joyce Garrett Singers. <clears throat> now this could only happen to a guy like me and only happen in a town like this. So may I say to each of you most gratefully, as I throw each one of you a kiss, this is my kind of club, alfalfa is. My kind of club, alfalfa is. My kind of rich folks too, people who drink with you all. Though I am bland, alfalfa is. Offering its hand, Alfalfa is. I'm glad I'm your nominee. Thanks for picking me. My kind of club, Alfalfa is. My kind of club, Alfalfa is. You know that I'm your man, cause I don't have a plan. And now that I run, Alfalfa is. My last best hope, alfalfa is. Five scotch and sodas, alfalfa is. Old CEOs, alfalfa is. One club that I won't let down. You're kings of this town. Yeah. My, no, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait just a minute. My late. My late friend, Alex Haley. My late, I, I have one more thing I want to say. My late friend, Alex Haley, the author of Roots, once said to be Lamar, if you would just say, let me tell you a story, instead of making a speech, someone might actually listen to you. So let me, <laughs> let me close with a little story about Alex Haley. To people who would forget just how lucky we are to live in this country, Alex would would say, find the good and praise it. It was a powerful message coming from the grandson of slaves. I used to think about those six words, find the good and praise it. Every time Alex would tell the story of John Newton, the slave trader who wrote the great hymn, Amazing Grace. 19 years ago, on a cold February afternoon in Henning, Tennessee, we, we buried Alex Haley. While an African flute played the melody of that great hymn, buried him next to the front porch where his grandma told him the stories that eventually became roots. On the gravestone there are those six words, find the good and praise it, good words to remember about our country 
and good words to remember about each other.